What's up, what's up, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna show you some back exercises you've probably never tried before. Now I'm usually very skeptical about new exercises because I like the excitement of new, but I also don't trust them because I know that results come from consistency over time. Not trying to confuse my muscles every time I go in the gym, not getting distracted by some next Instagram workout every single time, no. So in today's video, I'm not only going to show you the new exercises, but also explain which muscles they target, how those muscles work, and why we're able to make these exercise swaps while still getting results. So if you're excited for this video, make sure you shoot me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the little bell beside the subscribe button so that'll let you know when I post a new video. Your back is made up of multiple muscle groups, but the largest one is your latissimus dorsi or your lats. You want to train your lats because not only do they support becoming stronger overall, but they also help create a tighter and more streamlined look to your waist. In terms of how they work, your lats primarily support shoulder extension, so moving your arm from in front to behind your body, shoulder adduction, so moving your arm from extended out in towards your body, shoulder horizontal abduction, so moving your arm horizontally from in front to behind your body, and internal rotation of the shoulder joint, so rotating your entire arm inwards. They also play a secondary role in back extension and lateral flexion. In order to make the most effective exercise swaps, we want to look for the most similar movement patterns that can be performed at the most similar intensities. So going into today's workout, I'm gonna explain each new exercise in terms of the more common exercise we're swapping it for, and how this is more or less similar in terms of the underlying movement patterns and the intensity it's performed at. First up, we've got the bent over arc row, which kind of looks like a straighter armed version of the dumbbell bent over row. The dumbbell bent over row would normally involve shoulder flexion, but something you may have noticed when doing these is that you feel a lot of bicep engagement. This is because this movement also involves elbow flexion or the bending of your elbow as you raise up, a movement that's primarily driven by your biceps. To minimize this and shift more of the emphasis to your lats, I'm initiating the movement by driving back with my upper arm rather than immediately bending at my elbow. We're really emphasizing that shoulder flexion. I like to imagine there's an invisible wall behind my upper arm and I have to push it back in a smooth arc. As I raise up, my elbow will naturally bend, but because we're not actively bending that elbow, we'll minimize bicep contribution and we'll feel more of an emphasis in our back muscles. Next, we have the bent over high row, which again, looks kind of similar to the dumbbell bent over row, but if your elbow was way out to the side, this exercise is actually going to involve a lot less shoulder flexion and more shoulder abduction. The easiest way to tell what's going on is to pay attention to where my upper arm is moving. Instead of moving from in front of my body down and back, you can see that it's moving up and out to the side. Here, I'm starting with my hand in an overhand position on the dumbbell, then initiating the movement by imagining a string is pulling the end of the dumbbell straight out to the side, and I'm just trying to keep up by driving my upper arms out. If you remember, shoulder horizontal abduction. You'll notice as I raise up, my grip rotates slightly from an overhand to a more neutral grip. This is intentional and is designed to put less stress on the shoulder joint as you raise. Next up, we have the extended range of motion single arm row. This has a long name, but it has quickly become one of my favorite new exercises. So here I'm swapping this for a lat pull down. Now, depending which grip you use, you'll be moving through a slightly different movement pattern. An overhand grip is gonna use more shoulder horizontal abduction when you pinch your shoulders back at the start, as well as shoulder adduction as you lower down and pull those upper arms down into your sides. Whereas an underhand grip is gonna use more shoulder flexion, since we're really just moving our upper arms in front of our body and down to our fronts. Here we're combining a bit of both. I've positioned myself inside the cable, so I have to reach out to the side to grab it. Then from there, I start with an overhand grip, initiating the movement by pulling my elbow down and to the side, so shoulder adduction, then midway through, rotating my grip, so I'm now pulling my arm down in front, a little bit more shoulder flexion. Finishing off the movement by crunching to the side to maximize that contraction. If you remember back to when we went over all the different movement patterns, lateral flexion is also something that your lats can contribute to. This exercise is all about maximizing the stretch and then contraction in your lats. So make sure that you fully release your shoulder at the top, pull it down, then control every inch of the range of motion as you pull in. Next, we have the pull down to extension, which this is gonna look a little wonky at first. You might be wondering, is this a tricep kickback? What have we got going on? So this is something I would swap for a lat pull down or push down since it's essentially a hybrid of the two. If you look at the overhand grip pull down, that's combining horizontal abduction 
and adduction of the shoulders. Whereas if you look at the lat pushdown, that's a primarily shoulder flexion exercise. Here, I'm positioning my body so my torso is leaned to about the same angle I'll be pulling the cable. From there, I initiate the movement by visualizing pulling the rope apart and my upper arms out to the sides. Once the cable reaches my chest, keeping my shoulders down and back, I push the rope down and then control the raise back up. It's kind of like if you took the first half of a pull down and then combined it with the raise up or the second half of a push down. Since it's a combination of the two exercises, I recommend using a weight somewhere between what you'd normally select for each. You might have to experiment to get this right though. Finally, we have the extended range of motion pullover, which at first glance isn't going to look too different from a regular pullover. You might just notice a couple small tweaks that we're making to form. As you can see with a regular pullover, it's going to target mainly shoulder flexion. Looking at this variation, if you pay close attention to my hips, you'll see that rather than having them level with the rest of my torso, I start with them drop down, then I bring them back up to neutral as I raise. By starting with my hips down, this allows me to start from a more lat stretched position, increasing the range of motion and increasing the time under tension. The pullover can be a tricky exercise to get right if you've never done it before. So if you're not 100% comfortable with it, I wouldn't recommend starting here. And I'd recommend instead maybe starting by experimenting with a cable, a band, or just a really light weight with the regular variation. So you made it to the end of this video. Before we go, I want to let you know that a video collab I shot this past summer just went live. The video digs a little bit deeper into my personal backstory, I guess, from both a fitness and a career standpoint. So if you've ever wondered how I got here, why I'm no longer practicing engineering or like what set me on this path in the first place, then I will put a link to that video down below. I honestly had so much fun working on this project. I will throw some footage from it up on screen now, but it was really cool to instead of just be like filming my videos on my own at home to actually be on a set with a full team of people. It was super professional, like super cool. So I definitely appreciate if you could check that out. Again, the link will be down below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank, thank you for watching. Mood words, guys, you know. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. What's up, what's up? <laughs> she doesn't do it that. Okay. What's up, what's up? We are behind the scenes on Abby's shoot. Very excited, we're about to start shooting. And goodbye, goodbye. <laughs>